Microscopes really let you see close up on things that you wouldn't even notice. You see the details, so it's, it looks different, to, but to the human eye, it just looks like something you see every day. It was really cool because you got to see a pattern in the, the things that you were looking at, and it kind of felt like amazing that that could happen. Welcome to Microworlds, a world that exists all around us, but one that we can't even see without the help of microscopes. Oh, you can really see the detail on this. Through this series of videos, you'll learn about different kinds of microscopes and meet marine biologists at NOAA who use them as part of their daily work. These scientists need to see into this minute world to answer questions like, how old is this fish? Why do fish get sick? And what do seals eat? As a past Microworld student remembers. We took some skin of an onion peel and it just looked like white before and then when we put it under the microscope, it was like you could see like everything that made up of it and it looked almost like skin with all like the creases and everything. So it was really cool. Being able to see these creases, folds and rings is way cool. But these finer details are also really informative. Scientists like Chris Johnston who works at NOAA's Alaska Fisheries Science Center in Seattle, Washington, can actually use a microscope to tell us lots of things about marine life, like how old a fish is. So what do you think? What part of a fish would Chris look at to figure this out? Uh, by looking at their fins or scales. I can only think of the scales maybe. Maybe like the scales grow, make a ring just like trees do. Yes, you can use scales to age fish like salmon but at the Alaska Fishery Science Center, where we age lots of rockfish and other types of flatfish, we have a much more reliable method other than scales. Well, maybe by the bones of it, because I see human bones, they can see if the back crutches down or makes a curve, or maybe a fish has the same thing by getting longer or shorter. We can't really use the fish's skeletal bones to age the fish because the fish bones aren't really gonna tell us anything exact about how old the fish is. So we have other methods to allow us to age the fish more precisely. I think it's like this bone somewhere in their head, I think. You would count the little lines on the ear. You're absolutely right. Inside the fish's head, there is a bone, or rather an ear stone, which we use to age the fish. And it's more accurately known as an otolith. We use these oliglis to determine the age of the fish in years. Fish ear bones? Cool. When I saw like the ear bones, they were just wow. Because I've like I never thought a whale would have an ear bone or a fish. Just like we have ear bones that help us with balance, orientation, and sound detection, so do fish. In fact, there are three pairs of otoliths that lie deep inside a fish's head next to the brain, one of which is too small to see in this x-ray. And as Chris pointed out, they are not true bones, but known as stones as they continue to grow throughout a fish's life. Every year, a unique layer of protein and calcium carbonate is laid down on the otolith surface, creating rings. And by counting these rings, scientists like Chris can determine a fish's age. So now you might ask, where does Chris get these otoliths? The otoliths get to our lab from the surveys that we conduct during the summer. We send teams of scientists out onto commercial fishing boats that we contract, and we fish in the Gulf of Alaska and the Bering Sea. We separate all the fish by their species. We weigh them all, we measure them all, and we figure out if they're boy fish or girl fish. After that, we decide which fish do we want to take otoliths from. We take the otoliths out and we put them in a collection vial and then we ship them down to Seattle. Sometimes Chris can see enough detail on the surface of the otolith to count all of its rings, but usually he cuts them in half with a scalpel blade and then roasts them in a toaster at 500 degrees for about five minutes. Burning the otoliths really brings out the rings so Chris can make the most accurate observation possible. But sometimes it's still very difficult to see all the years of growth. If I have a really hard sample, an otolith that I'm trying to age, and I just really can't quite figure it out, I like to bring it down here to 
this bigger microscope with the camera so I can make it bigger, a bigger picture for me to look at. And I can make this otolith look really, really big and it'll help me count the growth zones in years. I'm going to say this is the first years right here. And that's the second year. And that's the third year. Fourth year. And there's the fifth year. The sixth year would be there. And it's probably seven. There's the eight, nine, ten, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, and probably thirty. That otolith came from a flatfish called the Dover sole, and now we know that they can live to be at least 30 years old. Other fish like another flatfish, the Pacific halibut, or a giant sea bass can grow much bigger and perhaps much older. So what's your guess? How old is the oldest fish ever recorded at the Alaska Fishery Science Center? Personally, I have no idea, but maybe like 50 years old would be like the oldest fish. Maybe. 80 or 60 or 70, like how old humans are. A hundred? I'm not too sure, maybe 100, 200? That's a pretty good guess. The oldest fish that our lab has ever aged was a yellow eye rockfish at 123 years old. Wow, that's old. Especially for a fish that grows to half the size of an average human. So yeah, that's cool. But so what? Why is it so important to know how old a fish is? That's a really tough question because there's lots of different reasons, but I can think the most important is so that we can provide population data to the scientists that set the limits on how much fish we can catch for a specific species. These limits are essential so that the fish populations can sustain themselves year after year after year. So I would say the most important reason we age fish is so we don't run out of fish. Throughout history, many fisheries have collapsed from overharvesting or rebounded due to careful management and conservation, while some have always been sustainably managed. It's a delicate balance that we must fit into since we depend on our natural resources for our survival. But the science behind sustainability and the health of a fishery is often complicated and difficult to figure out. And the more scientists like Chris try to find the answers, the more questions come up. Questions that you may be able to someday answer by peering into microworlds. Ow! What happened? One just zoomed away. One's like, it looked like someone slapped them or something. Slapped them and ran away. Whoa, Whoa did you see that? Yeah, I just see it just died like a bullet. Whoa! Whoa there it goes again. I one's on caffeine. <laughs> I think what I find the most interesting about this job is that every day for me is a mystery. Because every time I look at an otolith, I see something I've never seen before. And I think that's what keeps me interested, is that every day is a mystery in the world of otoliths.